ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's December 28th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com. Joined, as always, by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, the crab killer, as we discuss the oh news God. of the day. I'm and, the crab uh, saver. The crab I, saver. No, the crab, crab killer. And I'm just going to start today's show because because this was a topic of conversation yesterday. And I'm going to have my come to Jesus here with Matt because I was suggesting that he might be violating the law by going out uh, stone crabbing in Biscayne Bay and cutting off both crab legs of every crab claws of every crab that's a sucker to go try to eat his pig feet in his traps that are buried under the, the water out there all over Biscayne Bay. Well, I did my research and it is not illegal. If they're big enough, you are allowed to cut off both claws. So I stand corrected on that. Um, I can admit when I'm wrong, but I still, Matt, do not like the fact that you're responsible for hundreds of these crabs that now are defenseless against the octopus that are roaming the, the bay floors all over South Florida. And these poor little crabs yeah, yeah. have no way to defend themselves okay. from these octopus trying to eat them. Okay. So, so what, are they, what, are, what are the octopus supposed to eat? Are you okay with the octopus population dying off? But just because you happen to eat stone crabs? I don't eat octopus. I don't eat octopus. It doesn't matter I, what you eat or don't eat. Are you okay I with, with there? Like uh, most people don't eat octopus. Like they couldn't care less. It's not about eating it. Are you a selective genocidal animal killer? I mean, like the octopus needs stuff to eat too. So now we give them some nice juicy stone crabs. But listen, the truth is, when a stone crab loses its claws, it's it's it just hunkers down, and it, and it's still they don't get eaten. Like the, again, the stone crab population of Biscayne Bay is fine. They do a census on it every year. If there was a problem, you wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, going out and helping all the stone crabs, removing all the giant um, weights off of the front of their of their bodies, which they don't want anymore. Um, so like, you know, we're doing a service in the Bay. I, I don't understand what the problem is. You know, and, and I did like one post somebody put on the message board where they said, it's better to take both than to take one. Because if you take one, the crab has a false sense of security. And it thinks it can protect itself, but it only, it's only got one side to protect itself from, and it can't protect itself from the other side because it's got nothing there. And then the octopus just but comes. But if it has nothing on either side, the crab feels better. And that, and that, that was totally made up by that person, obviously. Yeah. But I like that theory. You know, great because effort. I got I got bigger fish to boil today. So oh, that's, to a that's a good one. Um, and listen, our most loyal listener on Good Morning Cane Sport is Ellie Shodell. So am, I, am, I, am I pronouncing the name correctly? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, Ellie Shadell. Yeah. That's Matt's mom. Okay. She wakes up at four in the morning every day, uh, back home in New York and watches Good Morning Kane Sport. Okay. She's in town right now. Okay. And and she's not even allowed in this house. Can you like uh, she's allowed in the house. She doesn't want to be in the house because I got my two college kids home and it could be a hot zone. I mean, like you know, for those who watch Good Morning Kane Sport, well, my wife literally had COVID. Two weeks ago, I guess. And my kids weren't home at that point. I was. Luckily, I didn't get it. I got to sleep in my office for 10 days, which was a lot of fun. And now the kids are in their rooms. And, um, you know, and, and they're roaming around the house. We're not making them, you know, not do anything. I did ask my younger one not to go to the Heat game that he got invited to. Uh, <laughs> he actually, he said, okay, I won't go to the Heat game. So that was good. But, you know, now he's going to go on a sleepover. You know, they're, they're teenagers. You can't tell them what to do. You know, they're college kids. You can't say don't live your life. And Truth is, if they get it, there's a probably a small chance I would get it. My wife can't get it anymore. And if I got it, I'm sure I'd be fine. I'm a, I'm a healthy young man who goes out stone crabbing. Um, and, uh, you know, so it is what it is. But my parents are older. So, you know, you, this is the whole thing I keep telling everybody. Like, nobody wants to hear it. But, like, it's not about the college kids getting it. It's not about the football players getting it. It's about the older people or the people who have immune problems. You know, you don't want them getting the flu either. I mean, it's not just COVID. Like, Old, you know, I don't want to call my parents feeble, but if you have older people who are feeble, who do have some health problems, like you don't want them to get the flu or COVID, you know, and like, the, so I'm protecting my parents they're here for, they're here for a couple of weeks and uh, we'll see them outside. They're staying, uh, you know, not in my house. <laughs> so, uh, so I get some extra cookies in the drawer that they're not going to eat. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. 
Well, did you see Xavier Restrepo's Instagram uh, post yesterday? I mean, about, yeah, yeah. About COVID, you're like, gonna put it on the you're gonna put it on the screen. I'm gonna try to in a minute here, but <laughs> it, 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 I, I still cannot get my hands around this whole COVID political. Do you protect yourself against it? Do you not protect yourself against it? Um, whole debate that's going on in our society. I, I mean, getting COVID. I listen, I, I get it. I get it because people in America have been raised to think for themselves. And with thinking for yourself comes a, a lot of proactivity and reactivity. And people who think for themselves, sometimes they come to a conclusion that uh, <laughs> the majority of Americans disagree with and perhaps even scientists disagree with. But it's like trying to disprove a, a historical fact that they, you know, that that they didn't see for themselves. It's like, how do you convince somebody of something that you can't physically show them or prove to them? You know, like there was a great example. Um, you know, I guess Donald Trump came out and said this: the the, the vaccine is the greatest thing ever. And then, you know, people are calling him the devil or whatever. But there was like a, a you know, but prior to that, he hadn't really said that. And, you know, it, it really has a lot of us really centered around Donald Trump, which is super weird because he's the one who made the vaccine. He's the one who like sped it through the process and the whole thing. And like, if he wanted to win the presidency, all he had to do was call it the Donald Trump vaccine and it saves everyone's life and everyone gets it. And like everyone lives on happily ever after if it actually works, which some of you may not think it works, but if it actually works and people believe it works, what do you, you call know, that? He'd be the hero of the world. Works. Instead, <laughs> instead we're in a quagmire. Out. Um, Operation Warp about, Speed, right? Isn't that what it was that? called? Yeah. Say it again. It was called Operation Warp Speed, right? Yeah, which isn't probably yeah. what you want to name something when you're trying to roll out a a, a well thought well, out vaccine. Uh, um, and and there, look, there. I think when the polio vaccine first came out, it was really causing a lot of problems, and they had to stop it for a couple of years, if I remember. I mean, I'm not a scientist. My, I, I've told you guys, my family is a bunch of scientists. And I've looked at some of it and a lot, there's a lot of distrust of vaccines because it's a ski and, and I get it. So again, you know, when you have a, a, a culture that, that wants to think for itself, but if they're getting information that maybe, you know, it, it's not propaganda, it is propaganda, but it's not propaganda because when you're in a country where it's one message only, and that's the only message you ever hear is the vaccine saves you, the vaccine saves you, or don't get the vaccine, it'll kill you. Don't get the vaccine, it'll kill you. Everyone will follow that message because they don't know any better. So right. because of, when you say it's politics, it's really just our culture. Our culture is, you know, you hear different things and you have to make up your own mind. It's either one or the other and you have to decide. And well, not to interrupt you because you I didn't, I, I was done. I don't even know where to go, go from that. I don't feel like getting on a kill. I don't feel like getting on a kill list from like Republicans or Democrats. So I'm trying to be like somewhat in the middle, but yeah. So, but anyway, we're, we're supposed to be talking about the news of the day. So I'm going to make this Xavier Restrepo uh, Instagram post the, the, officially the news of the day right now. Because I thought this was kind of interesting that a Miami football player is sending this out. And it kind of, I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Let me just, so he says, just imagine three years ago when someone had a cold or sneezed, we looked past it. Okay, true. Uh we allowed them to walk into our homes and we hugged them, okay? Uh, skip ahead now three years, and now people have been turning away family for an imaginary virus, Matt Shodell, whose mother is not allowed to come in his house, who's brandished to his back patio. She flies in from New York to visit him and his kids and his wife, and she can't even come through the doors of the house. She chooses okay? not to. We would happily have her in here, but you know they want to be safe for themselves. But anyway, so they're turning away family for an imaginary virus that they can't see, hear, or smell. All right, that's fair. Your mom can't see it. She can't hear it. She can't smell it. Um, because the TV said to, okay? And, and then he goes on to say, I wonder what else people were around three plus years ago without knowing about it because we weren't being tested like lab rats every time someone sneezed. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, like, this is a University of Miami football player posting this on Instagram. Eat healthy, exercise, have good hygiene habits, and turn off the TV. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. So here's, okay, so here's something that I just want everyone to know. And this is what I was trying to allude to before where I lost my train of thought. So there was like a, some sort of right-wing convention and, you know, it was a lot of the, you know, sort of anti-vaccine rhetoric. And a lot of people at that convention, uh, obviously they wouldn't wear masks, wound up 
like getting really sick. And, you know, they, they obviously aren't the type of people who are going to go get tested for COVID because COVID doesn't exist. So they just got really sick. And their theory is it was a biological warfare event against them by some unknown entity that like infiltrated this convention, right? And how do you dis- how do you disprove that? If those people don't want to get tested for whatever it is, even, even if they were tested, they probably wouldn't believe whatever results the government tells them, right? So it's like, this is what I'm trying to say. You can't, you can't convince somebody of something that they can't be convinced of. So it is what it is. What I do personally, and, and I hope everyone learns from this because I am the smartest man in the world. Just ask my wife and my mother. Well, my wife won't agree. My mother might. Um, I watch CNN and I watch Fox News. I watch them both. I, I keep telling my friends to do that and they refuse because they do like one or the other and they think one of them is propaganda. I keep trying to tell them they're both propaganda. When you yes, watch sure. both, you actually understand where both sides are coming from and you can make your own decision. Like make you can make a real decision. decision. Yes. That. But like some of my friends, they'll watch Fox. They're like, I can't watch two seconds of Fox. It makes me so angry. And some people watch CNN that I know. And they're like, it's all fake. They're making all this stuff up. And it's like, whichever network you watch, and there's this OAN, oh, I don't know, it used to be on my, when I had AT&T TV, I'd watch it and it looked like it had like some sort of yeah. OAN, like, I weird thing in the bottom corner, which I don't understand OAN what the hell that logo is. But, like, the top. Yeah, you gotta yeah but like, so depending what networks you watch, like, you know, they, 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 it used to just be the news. Like Walter Cronkite used to give you the news. Now it's talking heads that manipulate whatever news there is into whatever they want to say to have a point. Um, and you know, in some respects, sports has become like that, right? Everyone's got to take a side. It's not just so-and-so ran for X number of yards and XX touchdowns. It's, you know, so-and-so ran for that, but he sucks because of this and because of that. And his offensive lineman, you know, was amazing. And he only got that many yards or whatever, you know, they, they take some angle on whatever the actual facts are. It is what it is. That's what I say. It is what it is. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> the world's gone nuts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Xavier Restrepo made a little news with that rant. And I, you know, I'm like, wow, man, I, I just, I hope it's not our time to go anytime soon. I certainly don't look at dying as, as uh, cavalier as, um, well, listen, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, we already had, my wife's had it. Now we have two friends whose kids have it. Like it's everywhere right now. They said it's one everywhere. in 60 people in New York city have it, but the hospitals aren't filling up. And if they don't fill up in the next month, like you have to think this is a much more mild variant. You still don't want to have it, obviously. But like for the vast majority of people, it is not going to be horrible. You know, like I'm saying, that's why it's about the population that's vulnerable. And if you are out there and you believe that COVID actually really exists, like it's a real thing, then you shouldn't want the Miami Hurricanes football players to have it and bring it home to their families in the holidays. For those of you that were saying, you know, it's not going to affect them. Yeah, it's not going to affect them. It's when they go home, if they still are contagious, which can can be, you know, five to seven days, they believe. And And then, like, somebody at home gets it and die. Like, do you want someone in the Miami Hurricanes family to die? You know, like, if you believe in COVID, like, they probably did the right thing, even though a lot of you don't think so. I mean, I'm sorry. But it's just not – to me, it's not worth one death in a Miami Hurricane player's family. Not that that would have happened, but if there's a chance of that happening, you've got to take your precautions, you know? Yeah, no doubt. All right, so there is other news to the day, obviously, and, um, you know, we're going to talk about it. Uh, Let's start off uh, with – uh, our story today on three under the radar offensive players that need to step up, and uh, you know it, it's an interesting look at these three guys. I, I'm not going to give them away who the three are on this show okay. because then you know you wouldn't want to read the story. But uh, it's an interesting like look at, at, at three guys that we think uh, really need to step up. In hey, I'll, listen. Here. Oh, did I interrupt you? Sorry. You did. Oops, my bad. I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you who it's not. That's what I was gonna say. I'll tell you who it's not. It's not Tyler Van Dyke. It's not Zion Nelson. It's not Jalen Knighton. That's who it's not. That's not the. Yeah. That's not the three. Well, they've already stepped up, so they're already established players. But yeah. I just like, listen, yes, I don't like interrupting you. Every time you talk, I just I have this urge to interrupt you. I don't know why. It's fans. Listen, my kid. This is true. My kids will watch Good Morning Kane Sport, but only they they say fast forward to where you're fighting with each other. That's all they want to say. They don't even want to see us talking about the team or they don't care about the news of the day. They just want us going back. Like, you're wrong. Like, I go, wrong. They like that. Or when you interrupt me or I interrupt you, that's all they want to see. They, like, they could care less about the rest of the hurricane stuff. So, well, I, I was wrong about the illegality of cutting off two stone crab claws yesterday. So, today, stop saying cutting off. Stop saying cutting. You don't cut off the claws. I will get arrested if you keep saying I'm cutting them off. That will kill you. You do. You're I told you. I literally showed you. You, you twist one it. off. Oh, wait, where am I? Twist one off. Put it in the bucket. 
twist the other off, put it in the bucket, throw the crab back in the water. So they come off without even like a scissors or something? You do not use a tool. You literally, you grab it's on the knuckle, you grab on the inner knuckle and you twist down gently in so you're not like hurting it. And then it comes off very cleanly. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. All right, well, I'm learning more about stone, it. You want to come stone crabbing with us one morning? We go out early, but I'm happy yeah. to have you. Yeah, we'll see. I, I, now that, that, that makes I, for a good episode of Good Morning Kings. Now, now, you're, you. now you're selling me on the on the joys of dismembering the crab population of South Florida. Uh, I may take you up on that one day. If you want to go, I'm happy to you listen. Experience the euphoria of being able to do that. I prefer like, it when someone else comes because I, I can just sit there. I don't have to do any work. Yeah, except when and, I got to take it I can get that feeling of of this. Ah, you're gonna get eaten Listen, by an octopus now, you little crab. The, the the only Make work that I'm gonna do, if you come stone crabbing with us, okay, you're gonna do everything. The only work I'm gonna have to do is driving you to the ER after you're done how to get your boat? fingers reattached. What, is it is it a, how big is the boat? Oh, it's tiny. It's uh, it's like one of those little uh, what do you call them? If it's if it's three people, if you try to put four on there, it's a little. Yeah, I'm tiny. out. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, wow. I'll, I'll experience wow. this vicariously to you. I don't go on those little dinghy boats. I don't like them. All right. We're not going in the ocean. It's not. Right, back to the news of the day. Um, you, you talked earlier about get uh, emails and, and, and stuff. I don't know that we've done anything recently that elicited more stuff in, in my personal inbox than our interview of John Ruiz, uh, believe it or not. We, we, had, we had part one yesterday. We had part two yesterday. I mean, today we have part two. And it's it's interesting, like he's really inspired a lot of emotions and reaction with this plan to that he wants to build a stadium. And uh, nobody thinks it's going to happen at Lejeune and Bird Road and Court in the middle of Coral Gables. Uh, obviously, it is not. Um, but this guy's serious about wanting to build a stadium. Either that, or he's using it to get a hell of a lot of publicity, of of which we've contributed to. And um, it's it's really like a, a hot button for some people. Uh, especially those who have known him, who have opposed him, I guess, in court. You know, he's been a, a, a trial attorney at the highest levels in South Florida for some time, obviously a businessman. And uh, whenever you're in business, sometimes feathers get ruffled and, and it's not always hunky-dory in, in business. And uh, so, you know, he's got a lot of proponents. And he's got a lot of people that, you know, want to hate on him a little bit and stuff. And my inbox was was besieged yesterday with people emailing me about John Ruiz. And uh, so, Matt, it's good that we're putting something out that interests people. And I, and I did like the I did think the interview was interesting. And like I said, part two of it is on the website this morning. If you enjoyed part one, you can see part two. Uh, but uh, kind of like a, a hot button. I know you've heard it a little bit out in the community and stuff. Uh, you surprised at all at, at, at what a lightning rod this attempt to build a stadium by John Luis has been? Um, like, I know people who know of him. Um, I don't know anyone who really, like, knows him directly. But people aren't, like, big fans of his. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the guy personally. God bless his heart if he wants to donate $250 million to build a stadium. But, like, when I watched the interview that you did, like, you did a great interview. But, like, I'm still left with a lingering question. Is he trying to make money off this? Because he's talking about NFT deals and naming rights. And he doesn't only want the Hurricanes to play there. He wants other teams in there. You can't make money there if they're only there six days a year. Like, is this him building a stadium to compete with Dolphin Stadium and get a ton of people to go there? And it's his stadium and he gets the naming rights that he sells? Or is this a donation to the University of Miami where he's gifting them a stadium he's going to pay for it, and it's yours, Miami, and this is my gift to the community forever and ever and my legacy. Like, I got the sense that he's trying to make money off this. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Um, you know, but when he, when, he, when, he, when he mentioned stuff like naming rights um, and, and getting other teams in there besides Miami, like, I, I, I just I, I don't know where to go with that. Like, I don't understand it. I don't know if he thinks he's going to make money off of this somehow. I don't know if it's a donation. Maybe this is why he hasn't talked about it with Miami. Like, if you think about it, and this is what I talked about yesterday, like, if you're really going to give $250 million or whatever it is to Miami, like, you'd talk to them first and be like, listen, I want to build you a stadium. You'd talk to the higher-ups. I'm sure you'd get an audience with somebody pretty high up at UM if you say, I want to give you a stadium, and I have a billion dollars from this judgment I'm getting, whatever the hell it was that he said he was doing. Um, so... You know, he didn't do that. We know that. He he just 
talked to a reporter and said he wants to build a stadium. And uh, apparently he wants to – now he wants to keep Coral Gables High School, which I didn't understand either. At first he said he was going to put it where he the stadium – He wants to rebuild it. Right, but at first he said he was going to put it where the high school is. Now all of a sudden I guess it's not where the high school is. I, I don't understand that either. No, I think what he wants to do is he wants to put the stadium where the current high school is and he wants to build a new high school somewhere else. <laughs> well, he said he's going to upgrade the fields of the high school. So, I listen, I don't understand any of that. Um, regardless it's not happening regardless there's no point <laughs> because there was just so many it's like it was a great interview because it was like so like he's bringing up nft and some proprietary software that nobody else can possibly invent because he understands it the best of anyone in the world and maybe he does who am i to say i certainly don't understand it but like it's just weird when the interview was about him building a stadium and just all this other stuff like I've never seen an interview. Well, that's kind of my fault because like it wasn't I, your fault. He went off on a tangent. I know, but I asked him to because what what I wanted to accomplish with that interview is I wanted people to get to know him a little bit because I don't think he's go. I think he's going to become a much more high profile member of the Hurricane Nation family, fam, whatever you want to call it. And I think after the first of the year, there, there's going to be some announcements at some point about facility enhancements at the U and things like that. I think he's going to be in the middle of a lot of that. No, exactly listen, what it's going to mean. I don't know yet. I don't think so. I don't think, I think, think they want to deal. I think he wants to make money off it. Just watch, watch that interview. And you, you, no, I, I me. he's going to make a donation very soon towards improved facilities. I you think know? it's if he gets naming right. He wants na- He's literally said he wants to na- be able yeah, to sell the naming rights. Right. That's a separate piece of it. And, and, and maybe he would get naming rights if he, you know, maybe it becomes the John Ruiz Training Center or something if they build a better training room or that's whatever. Not what it's, not, it's not like he wanted to sell the naming rights. I don't think he wants to well, have the 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 after no. himself. Okay. No, the stadium, he wants to sell the naming rights. But I'm talking about a separate donation I think he's going to be making pretty Listen, soon. If he, John um, Ruiz, if, if John Ruiz is watching this, I have a message to John Ruiz. There's one way. There's one way that your money can guarantee the Miami Hurricanes will be the number one program in the country. And it's not building them a stadium when they're already playing in an NFL stadium. It's by you sponsoring NIL deals. Okay? You, you, get, you, get, you tell Mario Cristobal, or you put it, you can't tell Mario, but you tell 10 different agents for future players, I've got 500 grand for 10 players a year that I will give them to advertise for my company. And you get the 10 best players in the country to come here, and they've got a guaranteed 500 grand a year every single year they come here. You've got 10 five stars on the roster every single year. So forget the freaking stadium, John Ruiz, if you're watching. Go get some NIL deals for the Miami Hurricanes future players. That's how you will get this program to be number one in the country. You talk about wanting to watch them win championships again and how Deion Sanders is whatever what? the hell he did against the Hurricanes, got you into this what? whole thing. This what? is your legacy. If you want to – no. If you want to help the Miami Hurricanes do NIL deals. <laughs> can, can I say something? <laughs> and by the way, no, I'm still not done. I'm still not what? done. I'll let you do this, but I'm going to ask this question. What if he can do both? What's wrong with walking and chewing gum? He wants to make money, I'm telling you. Listen, NIL deals, by the way. If he's telling the truth, he just made over $20 billion. You take $20 billion, Matt, and you 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 can't have enough money in the NIL deals. Let me tell you why. Matt, you take 20, do you realize how much money 20 billion is? If you just take it and invest it with Goldman Sachs, they will guarantee you Two billion a year of income of income without you even touching your twenty billion. He did not once say he wants to gift the money to Miami. He did not say he wants to donate the money to Miami. He said he wants to build the stadium and get the naming rights and have other teams playing in his stadium. Forget that. NIL deals, this is why NIL deals are so important. It's not just to get the recruits, okay? This is what people haven't even talked about that maybe nobody understands, except for me, because I'm like John Ruiz. I'm the only one who can understand this in the whole world, okay? You get the NIL deal in place. 200 grand for the first year, 200 grand for the second year, or 250, 300 grand for the third year at Miami. If you stay a fourth year, 400 grand, whatever it is, like those kids, if it's enough money, will stay instead of go pro. But the most important part of this, they'll never leave. They won't transfer out because they've got the money in place. And if they go transfer to another school, that NIL deal dries up and that other school, are they going to really match that NIL deal? That's how you get players to come to your school, their top recruits, and get them to stay there even if they're not playing as freshmen and sophomores. So it can be like the old days where you got a redshirt sophomore, a redshirt junior who's starting for the first time and killing it. That's the future. Like when Jimmy Johnson came in and said, we're going to recruit speed and that's how we're going to win the championship. And he was right. This is how you're going to win championships in the new era of college football. And John Ruiz, if you're watching, you're the guy to do it if you really want to donate to Miami and make them the top program in the country because you can fix 
this program in terms of the number one team in the country within probably within two years, because you'll get five to 10 five stars coming here with those future contracts. If you convince these agents who believe me, talk to top recruits, even though they're not supposed to. You know, uh, in you place. know what I heard yesterday, Matt? You know, you know that lineman from Oregon that we thought was coming to Miami because he told us he was coming to Miami and then he the ended up going Yeah, he was a big time. He's a big time guy. He, he, will, be, he will be. He ended up going to Auburn, right? I heard that he got an, a, a massive NIL deal at Auburn. And I believe if the, what I heard is true, and I would not report this in writing because I don't know that it's true, but the number I heard was $500,000. Uh, and this is where college football is going. I mean, you know, the quarterback at Alabama is making over a million. I think you're going to see Tyler Van Dyke get a huge, huge, huge NIL. He, he better because if he doesn't, he'll be somewhere else if he doesn't go pro after this year. This yeah, is what I'm no, trying to I, say. I think you're going to see that. Um, That's what I'm saying. These and, these and, and I, all the money need to pony up for NIL, not for well, stadiums. I think, I think big ticket NIL is coming to Miami, and I if, think that these billionaires that are supportive of Mario Cristobal's, who really brought him here are going to be, or, um, I don't know if ringleaders is the right word. We'll just say leaders. <laughs> uh, they're going to be, I think they're going to be leaders. In they're going to the be the godfathers. They, yeah, godfathers. They're gonna be like, they, they, I think they are. And I think they're going to rally. The a godfathers bunch of, of NIL. Well, they're gonna, I think they're going to rally a lot of business people around NIL. And then you got Dan Lambert working from the North Broward side of the equation. And, you know, you're going to have big ticket NIL at Miami and, uh, Matt, um, unfortunately, you know, we were one of the we were the we were the pace setters, uh, one of the pace setters of NIL deals this year. We did uh, NIL deals with, I think, five or six different, I think six different, six, maybe even seven different players during the course of the football season this year. Um, if all this money starts flowing in from all these big money people, um, I got, you know, Kane Sport, we're going to be wiped right out of the market. I think the players aren't going to have any time for us, man. They're going to be like, you know, we can't. We're not doing we'll, your we'll little get the, We'll get the walk-ons. We'll do the walk-ons. Yeah, we'll do. We'll, we'll end up doing NIL deals with the walk-ons. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's great for the players um, that they're going to be, you know, obviously benefiting from all the commitment and everything that they make because it is massive. There's no doubt about it. All right. So um, all that's going on. Uh, now uh, let's talk. Uh, we talked about John Ruiz part two. We talked about our three under the radar offensive players that need to step up. A uh, few recruiting stories on the website uh, this morning. Uh, Miami is now on a defensive end from Cardinal Gibbons. You've, you've seen us writing about Anthony Moten quite a bit here in the last few weeks. Uh, now we're talking about R. Mason Thomas. And, and he's a kid that was committed to Iowa State and was supposed to sign with IS, Iowa State in the early signing period. He did not sign. And Miami swooped in, made him an offer, and now Miami's recruiting him very aggressively. I think there's a decent chance that R. Mason Thomas ends up a Miami Hurricane. Um, uh, Moten, obviously, we, we've talked about, is uh, a guy that that Miami you know could also end up getting. But uh, the one thing that, that I'm noticing, Matt, is th this is like like recruiting mania. <laughs> not not by surprise with Mario Cristobal. There's new offers going out every day. They're offering kids on Christmas Day when they're when they're sitting under the tree, uh, opening presents with their family. They're getting Miami Hurricane offers like they're being delivered by Santa Claus um, in the form of Alex Mirabal, Mario Cristobal, um, and any other staffers that are in the building working on Christmas Day. Uh, you, you know, it, it's really absolutely amazing and. Um, we've got a story on uh, defensive tackle Jason Moore from Maryland, who he got an offer on Christmas Day. This kid, R. Mason Thomas, he got an offer on Christmas Day. Um, so just a real intensive, intensive recruiting um, sprint to the finish line going on here. And I think, Matt, we're, th we're sitting there. With it. We have eight signees right now, I think the number was, right? Eight? Well, nine if you include Lichtenstein. Okay, so nine with Lichtenstein. You're going to see, I'm telling you, they're going to get to 25. Come hell of high water here. You're going to see transfers in the next few weeks. I know you're shaking your head. You you watch. You remember. You heard it from me on December 28th, 2021 on Good Morning Cane Sport. They're going to get to 25. You watch. They are they are killing the portal. The, um, I think we're going to see after the bowl games, I think we're going to see a lot of transfers. Wait, let me ask you, where are you getting the number 25 from? Why 25? They can take way more than I'm that. Just, 
they might take more than that. I'm telling you, the number is going to go. It is going to go big time. You're going to see at least a dozen transfers. I, I could see, I could see 20 them. because Mario literally said six. I think he said, what did he say, 16 to 20. I could see 20. I think he's third. 25, you got to kick off. I forget how many it is. You got to kick 15 kids off the team or something. I can't remember. I'm telling you, when they start this fourth quarter training program after the first of the year, a lot of guys are going to eliminate themselves. But you they have to remember really, what you're not what you're not considering again. You interrupt me so much because, because you're just wrong. When you're wrong, I'm not going to let you keep going. I'm wrong. You don't think this fourth quarter program is going to be r- more rigorous than anything they've ever done in their lives? That's With all respect about. to Mark Rick's mat drills under Gus Felder, like you don't think that these workouts with Aaron Feld coming in. I mean, I just hope somebody is filming the room. The first time Aaron Feld walks into the strength and training room uh, when he arrives in Miami, because like I can only imagine what that's going to look like. What's up? You know, or he'll like he'll come through flying. His hair is going to be you know shooting now. He'll probably spike it with gel and do all kinds of crazy stuff. That, um, that's not that's not what you're wrong about. But but they're they're going to have they're going to be expected to work harder than they've ever had to work. But, but that's not what you're wrong about. What what you're wrong about. Or, or what Mario will be wrong. If Mario takes 25 or more kids, he's done a grave grave disservice to the program because that means he's taken a lot of transfers who are probably mostly going to be sophomores or juniors. I, I, don't, I haven't really seen Matt, any seniors on there. You don't and, understand how bad this roster is. I Okay. But how do you rebuild the roster? Do you, well, do you, you rebuild do it? understand because we write about it every day. This roster. You, you, complain, I, I, you complain, I interrupt you. Here's the problem. There's seven kids graduating this year. S- seven kids. OK, and and maybe Terry comes back, maybe he doesn't. And the next year, there's 13 kids that are gone. OK, so if you're signing a bunch of kids that you're bringing in for for whatever purpose this year, 25 to 33 kids, whatever, you're now stuck next year where you can't max out to the point in the 2023 class that you otherwise could. That 2023 class is stacked with talent. They're going to have a year to recruit. Why should he rush after taking the job? And in one to two months, just grab everyone he can when you're costing yourself a year of recruiting of a well, 2023 class that's going to save your program. Grab anybody you can. I'm talking about they're, they're, they're trying to find players that can play next year and be in, be in the rotation. To I understand, give but if he, takes, if he takes a, a one-year view. win the damn Coastal and get to the it's, ACC title game. Here, it's a short-term view. Me it's a short-term it. view, and it's not going to help the program. I I hear me you. out from it. Let me hear, hear me out from it. This was my inventory. I actually wrote down today. Because I, I, I had once I learned that I didn't have to like cry over stone crabs dying all day. I actually <laughs> did some real work towards our efforts to cover the Miami Hurricanes. All right, so here's my shopping list that I think they need to that they need to round out this roster. I think they need one running back because they don't have a number a, a running back that's durable that is elite. Okay, you have Jalen Knighton, you have Don Chaney, who's never healthy. Uh, and then you've got Thad Franklin and Cody Brown. I think they need another running back. I think they're going to get that, but I don't think it's going to be a transfer. I think it's going to be a traditional high school running back. That's what I'm expecting. I think they need a receiver. Um, maybe it's Ladson, who, who's gonna, who looks like he's going to transfer. If, if, if Frank Ladson can pass physicals and prove that he's healthy, because all he ever was at Clemson was hurt, and if he's just going to be hurt, there's no point in bringing him to Miami. But if he can, if he can convince... Uh, I guess Mario Cristobal, that he can be healthy. I think Frank Latson is going to be added to the receiver room. They might even need one more speed guy, in my opinion, but we'll see. I mean, they've, they've got a nucleus, but you got to have, right now they have eight scholarship receivers on the team. Um, you really want to have 11. So they're going to look to fort- fortify the receiver room. I think they need three offensive linemen. I think they need three defensive linemen. I think they need two to three linebackers. I think they need one to two corners. Um that's the shopping list. If if Gary Furman is the GM, uh, and that's a um, short term that's a short term fix to win this year. What I'm trying to say is, I hope they take a little longer. They need to win this year. Don't get me wrong, but I don't. I that. think you they can. Win this year. I think they can win without taking 15 transfers. I really do. And really? if you just take those seven or eight key transfers and you save those other seven or eight spots, what was the record last year? Save those. Yeah, but save those. Seven and five. Is that winning? Of course not. Winning. You got to be better than that. Of course. Right. So you got to you got to inject the roster with talent. You know. You're not understanding me. 
You take seven or eight of the actual top transfers you need to win right now. I don't think you need 15. You're not bringing in 15 transfers to be 15 starters. I know that. Don't bring in the backups, transfers. Save those spots for top 20, 23 kids. Don't kick those kids off the rosters yet that are freshmen and redshirt freshmen that maybe will develop, maybe won't. If they're Let's one-year transfers, you're going to have them for 2023 20, anyway. What's that? If they're one-year loaner transfers, you're going to have those scholarship spots for 2023 anyway. They believe it or not, they still count against your 33 limit, 25 slash 33 limit. Right, but that's for this year. They only right, have nine. You can, right you can take 40 kids in 2023 with including transfers if you count backwards and save some spots. If they max out and take your 25 or whatever it is, but they got to win now. They're not good enough to win now. I want them to win now. You and think to win Mario came here to fucking okay. win seven games? Is the goal to win? Is the goal to win the whole fan base saying, what was all the fuss about? No, Gary, man. listen to me. Listen to me. They can't win the national championship this year. They can win the Coastal. Maybe the ACC championship. No, maybe the Coastal. But, the but they, their goal should be to win the national championship in three to four years, and they should have a plan for that. And that plan should not be to take transfers to fix a one-year problem. It should be to get 2023 recruits to be the bulk of this team to join the class from two years ago. And then in two years from now, with another class stacked on that, then you're a national championship contender. You don't yeah. do it by bringing in cast-offs from other programs or kids who want to maybe come to Miami. You know, Frank like Lassen that's just how you do it. was a very highly regarded recruit a few years ago. Some are. So listen, some are. Right. But a lot of them are leaving programs for a reason. And the reason True. usually is depth chart related. Like John Dennis. Okay, he, he's going to be. A, I think he's going to come here. He was an if, offensive okay. If you want an Oregon kid that want to come here, fine. If you want to turn this into Oregon South, fine. But I'm talking about top well, level. John recruiting. Dennis is a logical transfer to take. He's a South Dade high kid. Yeah, he'll take him. He, you know, he's still developing. Alex Mirabal, the offensive line coach, has put two years of development into him. He's been hurt out there. You bring him here and you keep the development going on. I have no problem with that. Um, yeah. Listen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever walked and chewed gum at the same time? Because you seem to have a big problem with that concept. Take one step forward, left, right, left, problem, right, the, and chew gum while you're doing it. Can you do uh, that? The problem is I live in reality, and the people who walk and chew gum live in fantasy world. That's the problem. Listen, I'm betting on Mario Cristobal's ability to walk and chew gum. I don't think if he fortifies the 2022 roster that it means that they're going to suck in 2023. I'm not buying it's into just, that It's at pure all. numbers. It's, it's right actual math. They're in the portal. I think they need a dozen guys. I hope they get them. And it's just math. It's not totally it's different not, when it goes out oh to spring God. practice in March. That's what it's I not hope. chewing gum. It's not chewing gum and walking. It's just pure math. The numbers are the numbers, unless the NCAA changes the rules. COVID restrictions have bloated rosters. You you can't. That's why there's a million people stuck in the portal that can't play anywhere. The key still remains. You need to get top recruits. The guys and in I'm the portal now that there will be like, five to ten transfers out. Once they start the fourth quarter program that listen, Mario Cristobal is bringing from Alabama and Oregon. These, these, listen, these guys that you want to take out of the portal, they'll have offers maybe from an Auburn or Mississippi State. The recruits you're trying to get will have offers from 50 programs, the Alabamas, the Ohio States. There's a reason the Alabama and Ohio States don't offer the John Dennis's of the world. Okay. And there's a reason why they offer the, you know, the 2023 top kids that, you know, I mean, you, you go down the list. There's a reason why this is how the Alabamas and Ohio States are doing it. And there's a reason why they're not walking and chewing gum, as you say. I guess they're spitting tobacco on their shoes. I don't know what you'd phrase it, but they're sure as hell not trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. They're doing it the way I'm suggesting. So I don't understand. I'm trying to say, do it the way these programs are doing it. Follow that example and do it better with NIL deals, getting these top five stars that these other programs want. And, like, that's how you build the program. Like, I don't need these John Dennis's of the world. Like, it's great. He was a backup for two years. He learned from Alex Milbrow. Great. But you know what? I used to say this to people all the time. Like, you could be a five-star, a four-star, a three-star, or a two-star. What I believe in is when you have offers from the top ten programs in the country, if you have offers from every single one of those top ten countries, I don't care if you're a no-star. You're a hell of a freaking player, man. And when those transfer portal kids don't have those offers from Alabama and Ohio State, which John Dennis won't if he goes in the portal, trust me, then, like, that's just a guy to me, you know, until he proves otherwise. And I don't say don't take John Dennis. Mario and Alex Mirabal should know John Dennis better than anybody. Of course they should take him if they want him. But what I'm saying is when you become a championship program, that's what you're doing, and that's what they should be doing, spitting tobacco, not walking and chewing gum. Listen, you're worried about numbers. I'm telling you, when this guy – when this guy It's Black Friday! 
one week left on the 45 day challenge. Get juicy, stay swole, and be awesome. Oh, yeah. Juicy. I didn't, I didn't. Now, you tell me that here, pick any little pick. Like, I don't want to pick. Actually, no, I don't want to. I don't want to call out a name. When Why does that look like when that guy hits campus and he's running the, the running the show at 5 a.m.? You tell me that there's not going to be defections from this roster. Well, and let, that let the me tell you something. Going to work themselves out. There's a reason that guy's wearing that mustache disguise. It's Brett Romberg. That's I Brett Romberg. Feeling, if you're Peyton Matosha, oh, I, I, I wasn't going to say this, but I wasn't going to call out a name, but let's use him as an example. And you've, you're getting around to graduation time because he's been here, what, three years now? So he's probably got to be getting pretty close to graduation. Are you going to want to sit there and go through workouts with that guy at 5 a.m. every morning? Or are you going to want to like take your degree and move on in life, which is why he probably came here in the first place if he was, if he was smart. And I'm just telling you, that's just one example. There's going to be several more. I guarantee you the numbers are going to work themselves out. I hope they nail the portal. I hope they bring 12 new faces in for 2022. I hope the Canes are winning the Coastal next year. And I hope they're getting to Charlotte. And um, if they do that, the euphoria that we're seeing in the fan base will continue. First of all, you said 12. It was a 16 new faces they were bringing a minute ago. Why is it down to 12 now? I don't know. Not, not, no, they, they're at nine now. I, I think they can do 12 transfers. That's what I said. I said 16. Now 24. you're right at my number. You know, you're right at well, my I, number. And I, I think they're mostly going to be transfers. I think there'll be a few more signees in the second period. They'll try to get Shamar Stewart. Uh, they're going to try to get that running back out of um, – so just say Matt is right because basically it just came back to my number of sixteen to twenty, which I said. I, think I, think I said I, th- I said I think it's going to be closer to twenty-five. You did. But now I'll come back to twenty. The proof will be in the pudding. The proof will be in the pudding. There's no point in us arguing about it on December twenty-eighth. Um, I think they're going to have. I think they're going to have a lot of interest. I think they're going to hit the thing hard once recruiting opens up here in another couple weeks, and I think you're going to see a flurry of Miami Hurricanes commits. So fasten your seatbelts, Kane Nation. Um, I'm I'm as fired up as Aaron Feld. We finally met. Have a real operation to cover after all these that's, years. That's true. That is it's true. It's been a long time, man. It hasn't been like this since Butch left. Okay, where the program's being run at this level, and and it's going to be awesome. And I'm telling you guys right now, we are we are going to be doing big things in 2022 at KaneSport.com. Um, that we hope will even make things even more fun for all you guys out there to um, enjoy your passion. Uh, but anyway, Matt, we've gone 42 minutes. I think people have had enough. So you go crabbing. I'm going to, you know, do some more figuring out of numbers in the transfer portal. Um, we'll be back tomorrow morning with another good morning cane sport. So until then, we wish everybody a great day and we'll see you next time, everybody.